Uh, hey, 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 welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, my name's Steve. I'm a former math teacher, but I still like doing some maths every now and again. And I'm going to have a go at the senior math challenge at the UK MT from the November 2018. So the senior math challenge is one where you would be doing it if you were a post-16 student. So you'd be doing A-level maths, although you don't need any of the A-level maths uh, to do the papers. It's aimed at that sort of difficulty and they're pretty tough. So if you want to have a go, if you look, if you're watching this on YouTube at a later date, if you look in the description below, you can have you get a link to the paper, and you can have a go at that uh, in your own time. Pause the video, um, but I'm going to have a go at it now. I've not seen this one before. Um, it was came out after I stopped teaching, um, and if you haven't done one of these before, or if you're a student, uh, kind of uh, in your schools asking you to do one of these. Um, uh, you can have a go at this, and hopefully the thought process I go through as I'm doing the questions will help you um, think about kind of how to approach different sorts of mathy questions. The paper is difficult. You get an hour and a half. So if you've done one of the uh, junior or intermediate ones, you usually only get 60 minutes. You get an extra 30 minutes of this because it is pretty difficult. So don't expect to finish it, especially if you're a student. Um, and you're going to time yourself. Don't expect to finish it all in 90 minutes. There'll be some questions you can't do. And what I would recommend, especially if you're doing this uh, for, for proper, so you're doing one going forward, is that you, if you get to a question you can't see an elegant way of doing it, just skip it and come back to it at the end. The way the scoring works, you can see 0 0.6 there, you, it's different to the junior and intermediate ones. You start with 25 marks. Um, you don't get any marks or lose any marks if you fail to answer a question. So if you leave it blank, that's absolutely fine. You get four marks for every question you get right, and you lose a mark for every one you get wrong. So the, be the benefits for this, sorry, the incentives for guessing on this is way lower than the other ones. There's no, at no point you should you randomly guess. You should generally only guess if you've narrowed it down to two options, um, because that's odd. you're actually going to expect to gain more marks than just leaving it blank. Um, and so the maximum score you can get is 125. So if you get all 25 right, which I will not do because I've never done that, uh, on a senior one, you get 125. And finally, if you're doing this at any point in your life, it's because you're good at maths and you're probably good at it because you enjoy it, like me. So treat this as an exercise in having a look at some different maths, some elegant maths, some maths that you just won't see on other maths papers, um, and enjoy it. So obviously there'll be some you some you struggle with, some I find easy, and vice versa, there'll be some I struggle with. Uh, if functions comes up, which I think there is a functions question, I'm going to struggle with that question because it's not something I'm good at. Um, but we're going to give it a go. Um, we're going to have a look at the time. I'm actually going to time myself, but I'm not going to stop when 90 minutes is up if I can keep going. Um, I'm just going to have a go at every question. And then at the very end, we're going to mark it. So if you want to have a go, pause this video, have a look at the paper, get some paper and a pencil or a pen. Uh, and give it a go, give it your best shot, and enjoy yourself. But we're going to crack on with question number one. Ooh, now that's question two. Question one. When the following are evaluated, how many of the answers are odd numbers? So we could work them all out, or we could think about it. To get an odd number by multiplying, you have to multiply only odd numbers together. So this is lots of ones multiplied, so that one will be odd. This one will be even. This will be 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, which will be odd. This will be even, and this will be odd. So there will be three of them. You could work them out, uh, but 5 to the power of 6 will take a bit of time. The positive integer, 2018, is the product of two primes. What is the sum of these two primes? Well, 2018... Uh, for it to be the product of two prime numbers has to be two, has to be one of them, times 1009. And if it's the product of two primes, which means they both have to be primes. You don't need to check this is prime because of the way the question is phrased. Um, there will only be two factors because if 1009 isn't prime, you'd split it up into it's two prime factors or whatever, and then you'd have three prime factors, not two. So that doesn't matter. What is the sum of these two primes? It's going to be 1011. Which of the following shows the digit six after it's been rotated clockwise through 135 degrees? So if, let's say that's at north. 135 degrees would be 90 degrees 
which is a quarter circle, and then 45 degrees. So this point here will be here, and so the 6 is going to look something like that as it's turned round. So it's going to be this one here. You can see that if you, and this is a bit easier if you've got the piece of paper in front of you, if you kind of rotate that back round, you get back to the 6. The difference between this one and this one is that's been reflected. Yeah, so it will be this one. Which of the following is not a multiple of 5? Well, that one is because 10 squared has a factor of 5. Ooh, got to be careful there. <laughs> so this is a difference of two squares. That's the same as saying 2010 plus 2005 multiplied by 2010 minus 2005. And this is 5. So that will have a fact. In fact, this is, this is a big number, but this is 5. So this will, this will be this times 5. So that will be a multiple of 5. So we're going to check these two separately. 2020 divided by 1001 all squared is the same as saying 2020 divided by 1001 twice. Two thousand twenty divided by a thousand and one is twenty, and that'll be twenty times twenty. So that one will be. And I imagine a similar oh hang on, no, this one is going to be very similar to this one. This is also a difference of two squares. Uh, and that is five, so five times something. So that one will be. So I think it's this last one. Again, if you do 2015, just double checking, is the same as saying that. So basically, if we divide fives into 2015, you're going to get 403. And that's not multiple of five. That will be 403 as well, which will not be a multiple of five. Sorry, my head's in the way. Uh, yeah, so that gets you 403 squared, um, which will not be multiple of 5, so it's going to be E. It's amazing how many times when you do this type of question that the answer is E, because they're going to expect you to do them, you checking A, checking B, checking C. Generally, I will check the ones, if I can spot any quick ones to do, I'll do those first. Which of the following numbers is the largest? Oh dear, lots of numeracy today. Um, so this is 3 with some remainders, so it's going to be 94 over 101. This one will be, I wonder if there's a quicker way of doing this. This doesn't divide by 3, neither does this. Oh, does this divide by 11? No, it doesn't, but this does. This is 11 squared, so I don't think this simplifies, because I think 487 is co-prime to 121. Because 121 will only have 11 as a factor, and 487 doesn't go into 11, so you won't be able to simplify them. So let's give this a go. 321 is 363. So you're going to have 3 with... 124, nope, oh, so this is going to be, that's going to be 4 in a bit, isn't it, 4, 421 is 484, so this is going to be 4 with 321s left over, so it's not that one. Right, can we get four lots of 153? Well, 415 is 60, so that's less than four. 417s four is 68, so that's less than four. And four 203s, so is that right? Just double checking, four lots of 121 is 484. So yeah, this is larger than four, the rest of them are all smaller than four, so I think it's B. 
which of the following is equal to 25 multiplied by 15 times 9 times 5.4 times 3.24? Hmm. So, twenty-five times five times three. So I'm going to write that as one hundred twenty-five times three times three squared times. Fifty four goes into three, doesn't it? Three eighteens. So I can say that's the same as one point eight times three times one point oh eight times three. Okay, so I want to tie this up a bit. One hundred twenty five. And then you've got uh, five threes times 18 is nine fifths, because the five's going to cancel with this. And then this is 108 is It's 108 over 100, which is, I'm just going to simplify this one, that's going to be 54 over 50. Which is 27 over 25. So this is 27 over 25. And then... 125 will cancel out with the 5 and the 25. So you're going to have 3 to the power of 5. That's going to cancel out. Multiply by 9, which is 3 squared. Multiply by 27, which is 3 cubed. And in total, you're going to get 3 to the power of 10, which is an option. Fiddly. The circles P, Q and R are all tangent to each other. Their centres all lie on a diameter of P as shown in the figure. What is the value of the circumference of Q plus the circumference of R over the circumference of P? So, my guess is it's going to be a quarter. And the reason is, is that nothing is fixing Q and R to be, to make R's bigger than Q. So in theory, Q and R uh could be the same size there's no there's no there's no fixed length here is there there's no saying q and r meet two thirds of the way down so q and r could be the same size i believe the centers all lower lying down to p so let's assume that q and r are the same size which means that if the radius of p is 2r the radius of each of these is r. So I'm using, I'm using the wrong letters. Let's say the radius of p is x. 
That means the radius of r and q will be, sorry, we'll say that's 2x, which means the radius of q is x and the radius of r is x on the basis that they could be the same size. Oh, it's probably going to be 1, actually. It's almost cer Apologies, it's almost certainly going to be 1. Because, for the same reason that Q and R could be the same size, Q could be negligible and R could be the same size as P. Because they're not fixed, they could be any distance. So, I'm not sure there's another way of doing this other than just assuming that. But let's say that the circumference of P is going to be uh, 4x pi. So, that's the circumference of P. And the circumference of Q and or R, so Q is going to be 2x pi, and R is going to be 2x pi. Areas would be different. Areas, you wouldn't be able to do this. But circumferences, because R and Q aren't fixed, their circumference is will be the same size as P's together. I'm not sure if there is a... Another way of doing that, other than just spotting the fact that they they could be the same size, or effect, effectively, you could you could effectively make Q's radius effectively zero, and then R for it to fit alongside this diameter would be the same size as P. What are the last two digits of seven to the power two thousand and eighteen? So I know how to work out the last digit of this. I wouldn't know how to work out the next to last one. However, because the last digits of these are all different, my technique for just working out the last digit would work. So if you think of your powers of 7. 7 to the power 1 it ends in a 7. 7 squared ends in a 9. 7 cubed will be ends in a 3, i.e. 9 times 7 is 63. 7 to the power 4 will be 3 sevens, ends in a 1. 7 to the power 5 will be 7 times 1 will get you 7. And you can see that they're going to keep cycling. You're going to have 7, it's going to go 7, 9, 3, 1, 7, 9, 3, 1, 7, 9, 3, 1. 7, 9, 3, 1. So, so just looking at the last digit, to get the last digit, you're just counting how many sevens you've multiplied together. And because it works in a little cycle, it will be 7, 9, 3, 1, every 4. So we're going to see how many 4s go into 2018. Okay, so we're going to do how many 4s in 2018. So how many 4s in 20 goes 5. How many 4s in 1 doesn't go. How many 4s in 18 is 4, remainder 2. Or you've got 504 cycles of 4, so this, 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 504 times, with 2 left over, which means you've got 2, you're here at this point. So whatever the last digit is in this, because you've done 504 loops of 4 with 2 left over, you're 2 through the next loop, which means it must end in a 9, which means... It must be 49. How I work out the 4, I don't know. But because the options I've got, I know that it ends in a 9. I miss one out. Yeah, 8, 9. The diagram shows a rectangle, A, E, F, J, inside a regular decagon, A, B, C, B, B. What is the ratio of the area of the rectangle to the area of the decagon? So, hmm. Well, if we do something like that, So we're going to say this length is x. So the distance from the centre to the edge is x. So one of these 
is x. I should have made this picture bigger. I made some of the later ones bigger. So the area of the hexagon, of the decagon, will be 10 multiplied by the area of one of these triangles. That's going to be 36. Hmm. <laughs> well, I'm going to keep going. I think I might be on the wrong path here. It's going to be 10 lots of... sine 36 times x squared. So 10x squared sine 36. And the area of the rectangle will be two of these, because you've got one there and one there, plus one of the larger triangles. So if you're looking at that larger triangle, that's going to be an x and an x. And that, I think it's going to be 1 to 4. And that is going to be 180 take 36 is going to be 144. So, not apologies, not going to be, it's going to be uh, 2 to 5. But let's see if I can show you that. So, the area of the rectangle is going to be 2, lots of sine 36 times x squared. I'm using half a b sine c to work out the area of one triangle, which is going to be 2x squared sine 36, plus two of these thinner triangles, which is going to be 2 times sine 144 times x squared, which is 2x squared sine 144. Now, if you think about the symmetry of the sine graph, there's 180, you know that 36 is the same as 36 off 180, so the value of sine 36 is the same as the value of sine 144. So these are the same, effectively you can replace this because of the symmetry of the sine graph with sine 36. So 10 of the triangles make up the hexagon. And four, because remember, this triangle is the same area as that one because of this. And four of them make up the rectangle, decagon, not hexagon. So the ratio is 10 to 4, or 5 to 2, or 2 to 5. Hmm. On a training ride, Laura averages speeds of 12 kilometers per hour for five minutes. And then 15 kilometers an hour for 10 minutes, and finally 18 kilometers an hour for 15 minutes. What was her average speed over the whole ride? So, 5 kilometers an hour for 5 minutes. So, what I'm going to do, do is work out the total. I know the total time is 15 plus 5 plus 10. The total time is 30 minutes. So, what we're trying to do is work out the total distance. And distance is speed times time. So it's going to be, the first one will be 12 times a twelfth, because five minutes is a twelfth of an hour, plus 15 times a sixth, plus 18 times a quarter. So in total, the total distance... It's going to be 12 times a 12th, 1 kilometer, plus 15 times a 6th is 2 and a half, plus 18 times a quarter is 4 and a half. So the total distance is uh, 8. So if she does 8 kilometers in 30 minutes, she does 16 kilometers in an hour. 
How many, for, how many of the following four equations has a graph that does not pass through the origin? So, when, to, for it to pass through the origin, when x is 0, y has to be 0. So when x is 0, y is 1. That doesn't work. When x is 0, y is 0. When x is 0, y is 0. When x is 0, y is 0. So my belief is it's that one. That seemed easy. Tell you what, that seems easy compared to that one. Hmm. I got that right. I'm just going to check. That just seemed a bit too easy. How many of the following four equations has a graph that doesn't pass through the origin? When x is 0, y is 0. Yeah, 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 that's fine. Just... Regular tetrahedron is a polyhedron with four faces. It's one of the... Oh, apologies, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, that seemed easier. So these three pass through the origin. That one doesn't. So there's one that doesn't pass through the origin. Thank you very much, Iron Dragon. I appreciate that. I thought it was easy, but it's still easy. It just, I, I misread it. A regular tetrahedron is a polyhedron with four faces. It's one of the five platonic solids. If you want to guess what the other four are, it'd be my guess. Uh, each of which is an equilateral triangle shown. A solid regular tetrahedron is cut into two pieces by a single plane cut. Which of the following could not be the shape of the section formed by the cut? It's a visualisation one. So if we cut it like that... Because we're slicing through one, two, and then you're going down three, four edges, you're going to make a shape that's got four um, sides. So my guess is that it's a pentagon. Basically, when you're cutting it, for every edge you cut through, you're going to add one side to your cut your cross section. So my guess is that if you can make a square, you can definitely make a rectangle. And probably the converse is true. And I imagine you can make a trapezium. A triangle is not equilateral. You can just cut it. If you cut it like that, you're cutting through three edges. As long as you're not cutting it parallel to the base, you won't get any equilateral triangle. So my guess is it's a pentagon, because I don't think you can cut through five edges, if that makes sense. For every edge you cut, you add one side to the cross section. I think it would be difficult if they were all four-sided shapes, but my guess is that you can probably make nearly every four-sided shape by cutting like this. Almost certainly you can do squares and rectangles. If you can do one, you can do the other by just changing where you cut, probably. The lines y equals x and y equals mx minus 4 intersect at point P. What is the sum of the positive integer values of m for which the coordinates of P are also positive integers? So... Positive integer values of m for which the coordinates of p are also positive integers. So if we sketch this to see if we get an idea, we know the graph of y equals x is that. And given they've said, given they've said that p is a positive integer and the gradient is 4, oops, no, the gradient is not 4, the gradient is positive, you've got... This is where, I wonder if I can change the colour of this, so I'm going to do blue. It's got to hit at negative 4. And if m was 1, you'd hit like that. If m is 2, 
m is 3, m is 4, I'm struggling here, and m is 5. So you're going to have an infinitely, infinitely many, um, infinitely many intersections as long as m is larger than 1. Hmm. What is the sum of the positive integer values of m where the coordinates of p are also positive integers? I think you can show, my guess is that when m is 5, you, 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 I think, let's say m is 5, you've got to have x equals 5x minus 4. Because the, if, the, if you're hitting a line y equals x, y is effectively you're substituting y into x. And this is going to be 4 equals 4x. So that is the last one that works. That is when x and y are 1. So at the point 1, 1, uh, it's going to hit. So when m is 5, x and y are 1. And if m was 6, x and y would be positive, but they wouldn't be integers. They'd be an int number less than 1. So do we just have to check the others? So let's check the other ones then using a similar logic. So we've got the pair, so m and x and y, x and y. So when m is five, x and y are one. Let's try m is four. So x is four x, take four. That's not a whole number. Let's try m is three. Yeah, so when m is 3, x and y are 2. And the only other one we need to check is m is 2. So when m is 2, you've got x is 2x, take 4. 4 is x. So when m is 2, x and y are 4. What is the sum of the positive integer values of m, for th which the coordinates of p are also positive integers? So 5 gets you positive integer, 3 gets you positive integer, 2 gets you positive integer. So the 5 plus 3 plus 2 is 10. The following 12 integers are written in ascending order. 1, x, 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 y, 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 8, 9, 11. Why not just solve x equals mx minus 4 given x is an integer? Yeah, that would work. Yeah, so the person, uh, this is Iron Dragon 1. The person is just suggesting, he or she, sorry. Is suggesting x equals mx minus 4. So you've got 4 equals m minus 1 out of x. So you could have 4, you could have 1 times 4, 2 times 2, 4 times 1, which is the effectively the ones we've got here. That's 4, 2, and 1. So 4 and 1, 2 and 2, 1 and 4. You're looking at the factor pairs, effectively, of 4. So yeah, that would work. Well spotted. The following 12 integers are written in ascending order. The mean of these 12 integers is 7. What is the median? The median is y. So so one plus eight plus nine plus eleven is twenty nine. So we know that the, if the mean of 12 integers is 7, then 7 twelves, we know these add up to 84. So we know that 3x's plus 4y's adds up to 84 less the 29 of these four. So 84 take 29 is 55. So what we're looking for are, we, we know the median is y, 
So wh wherever the median is, the median is, is y. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The median is between these two values here. So the median is y, so we've just got to work out what y is. We need a multiple of 3 plus a multiple of 4 to equal 55 with the restriction that you know that the multiple of 3 is less than the multiple of 4 and they're between 2 and 7. I already know that's not an answer. So... Alright... So, I'm going to list the multiples of, we know y, I'm just going to just speed my time up, we know y has to be 6, 7, 8, or 9. So if we have 6 4s, 24, plus 7 31, that's not a multiple of 3. 7 4s, 28, plus uh, 27, that is a multiple of 3, but I'm going to come back to that. We've got 8 4s hmm. 8 4s 32 plus 27 I'm doing bad maths, am I? No. 32 plus 23. And then 9 fours. It can't be 9, can it? I'm doing something wrong here. That's what I've done wrong. Let's go back. Hats up. Well done if you spotted it. It's 3x plus 5y's is 55. So we're looking for, this will be a bit easy to spot, we're looking for multiple of 5 plus a multiple of 3 to be 55. So my guess is going to be 15 and 40. That works, doesn't it? So if x was 5, 3 5's are 15, and 5x is 40. And that gets us 55. Um, let's just double check if we do 3. Yeah, because this has to be a multiple of 5 as well to get to 55. If this is a multiple of 5, and this is a multiple of 5, this has to be a multiple of 5. So x has to be 5, and therefore y is 8. So d is 8. Square is inscribed, so inscribed uh, means it was within the circle and all the vertices touch the circle itself. In a circle of radius 1, when an isosceles triangle is inscribed in the square as shown, what is the ratio of the area of this triangle to the area of the shaded region? So hang on, what's the, what's the circle's a radius of 1? So we know we are trying to find... What's the ratio of the area of this triangle to the area of the shaded region? So, we know that distance there is 1. Which means, if that's 1, The area of the shaded region, let's just work out the area of the shaded region. The area of the shaded region is going to be oh, we, uh, before we do that we need to work out the length of the hexagon. So let's just call that x. We know that 2x squared is 1. So x squared is so x is the square root of a half is root 2 over 2. It's 1 over root 2, but I've just rationalised it. So x is root 2 over 2, which means that the full length is root 2. So if we just 
uh, erase that and erase that. The full length is root 2, which means the height of this triangle is root 2, and the, ra the radius, sorry, the, the length of this square is root 2. In fact, we can work out the area of the triangle now because this is halfway, that's root 2 over 2, and then the height is, uh, the whole height is root 2. So the triangle is going to be, it's going to have an area of 1, isn't it? The triangle is going to be half base times height, which is going to be root 2 over 2 times root 2 over 2, uh, which we've just worked out, if you square this, you get 1. So the area of the triangle is... No, it's not. Ignore me. I'm being stupid. The triangle is the whole thing. So the area of this whole triangle is going to be half base, which is this, root 2 over 2, times the height, which is root 2, it's going to be root 2 times root 2. It's 2 over 2 is just 1. It is 1, but what have I done wrong? This squared doesn't get you one, does it? If you square this, you get a half. Yes, so this squared gets you a half, which means this times this gets you one. Yes. The area of the triangle is 1. Uh, yeah, I was just being, I had a bit of a brain fart there. So the area of the shaded region, so the shaded region is going to be pi r squared, which is just going to be pi times 1 squared, which is going to be pi, subtract the area of the square, which is going to be root 2 squared, which is going to be 2. So the ratio is pi minus 2 to 1, which is that one there. Sorry, I had a bit of a brain fart there. Thank you very much, Iron Dragon. Where are you from? Now, the numbers P, Q, R and S satisfy the following equations. P plus 2Q plus 3R plus 4S is K. And 4P is the same as 3Q is the same as 2R is the same as S. What's the smallest value of k for which p, q, r, and s are all positive integers? Isaac, haven't done the 28 paper since 2018, thought it'd be fun to do it again. Oh, so you've done this one before? Yeah. Um, hmm. So, I don't know if this is the right track. So, because S is the same as 4P, you know that S is a multiple of 4. P is the same as a quarter of S. So you know P is a quarter of S. 
in a 2Q Three Q is S, so Q is S over three. So two Q is two S over three. So that's two thirds of S. So you've got a quarter of S plus two thirds of S plus three R is S, so two R is two R equals S. So R is S over two. So three R is three S over two plus 4s is k. So a quarter plus two thirds plus three halves plus 4s. Hmm, I'm not sure if this is going to get me anywhere. A quarter plus three halves is seven quarters plus two-thirds, two-thirds s plus seven-quarters s plus four s is k. My guess is it's 24 for a very weird reason that I think s could be a multiple of 24 because a quarter of 24, anyway, we'll, we'll see, we'll see. Um, two thirds of plus seven quarters is gonna be some number of twelfths. So this is gonna be uh, eight twelfths plus 21 twelfths. It's gonna be 29 twelfths of S plus four S is K. That's going to be 6s plus 5 twelfths of s is k. Uh, can write this as so six seventy. This is seventy-seven twelfths of s is k. So my guess is that k is seventy-seven. S will because s could be twelve, which means k. Is, yeah. So if s is twelve, so s is twelve, then p is three. Q is. 4 and R is 6, so 3, 4, 6, 12, which gets you 77. Yeah, so we did get there. I believe if S is 12, because it goes into 12, in fact, for, for, for K to be a whole number, S has to be uh, a multiple of 12 to cancel the 12 out, and the smallest multiple of 12 you can get is 12. So I think 77 is correct. My guess of 24 was because I knew 12 would come into it from, from all these all these numbers here. Bethany has 11 pound coins and some 20p and some 50p coins in her purse. The mean value of the coins is 52 pence. What could not be the number of coins in the purse? Um, 11 pound coins and some 20p coins and some 50p coins. So we're going to say, I'm going to say it's 11, I'm going to call the, num the number of 20p and 50p x and y. So 11 plus x over 5 plus y over 2. is 6 plus y times 52 over 100 which is uh, 
26 over 50, which is 13 over 25. Nope, can't see how to do this one. I have to come back to it. The mean value is 52 pence. That means there's a lot of 20 p's. could be an awful lot of 50p's as well because that doesn't really affect the mean. Adding a 50p pence reduces the mean by a tiny amount but adding a 20p reduces by a lot. So there's an awful lot of 20p's or there's an even large amount of 50p's. I'm going to come back to that one. P, Q and R are three angles of a triangle. When each has been rounded to the nearest degree the following is the complete list of possible values of p plus q plus r. So p, q and r are integers. So if you had and then 59.8, they would all round to 60, which means you can definitely get 180. Yeah, they've all got 180. So you could... So 60.4, 60.4, and 59.2. So these two would round down. In fact, all three would round down. So these would be 60, 60, 59. So you can get 179, but I don't think you can round down twice. And I'm, I'm just saying they're all roughly 60, but it doesn't matter. You could have... 120, 30, 30, if you want, as your base, as your like base numbers. So I think you can get 179. So my guess is this, because I think you can also get, if you had uh, 60.2 and then 50, nope, you have, if you have 60.5, 60 60.5 and 59 exactly, these two would round up and this would stay as it is. So you can have 61, 61 and 59, which gets you 181. So my guess is it's, it's probably going to be A. I haven't checked whether you can get higher than 181, but it will be symmetrical. because of Would it be symmetrical? Can you get 182? Let's see if we can try and get 182. I don't think you can, because if I add anything less to this, it doesn't round up. So this is the smallest it can be to round up both of these, in which case there's no way to get this to round up as well. So yeah, I believe it is A. How many pairs of numbers, M and N, are there such that the following statement is true? A regular M-sided polygon has an exterior angle of size N, and a regular N-sided polygon has an exterior angle of size M. Oh, you need them both to be true. So you need, if you had a 10-sided polygon with exterior angle of 36, then a 36-sided polygon would have exterior angle of size 10. Which it does. So that's one pair actually, so 36. So if M was 10, you can have 36. And because of the way it's worded, you're just looking for two pairs of numbers. I imagine M would be smaller than N, so 10 and 36. 36 and 10 would also work, but I think that wouldn't count twice. So what we're looking for is to work out the exterior angle is 360 divided by the number of sides. 
and then conversely you also need 360 divided by n to equal m and the only way this will work is if m multiplied by n gets you 360 so i think we're looking for factor pairs of 360 that's why 10 and 36 work so if we do that and try and get all the factor pairs of 360 you can see all these are even numbers so two times one. Oh, they won't work. You can't have a one-sided polygon or a two-sided polygon. So the smallest one, so they won't work. The smallest one you're going to have is three. So an equilateral triangle has an exterior angle of 120, which it does. And an 120-sided shape has an exterior angle of three, which it does. So yeah, we're just looking for all the factor pairs of... 360. So I'm just going to do a bit of numeracy now. Um, 4 times 90. Uh, 5 times 72. 6 times 60. 7 doesn't go. 8 goes 45. 9 goes 40 times, 10 goes 36 times, 11 doesn't go, 12 goes 30 times, 13 doesn't, 14 doesn't, 15 goes 24 times, uh, 16 doesn't, 17 doesn't, 18 goes 20 times. So I think actually the converse works as well. So you've got 3 and 120 and 120 and 3. So if we count these, we've got 1 pair, 2 pair, 3 pair, 4 pair, 5 pair, 6 pair, 7 pair, 8 pair, 9 pair, 10 pair, and then the, com the reverse. 11 pair, 12 pair, 13 pair. So I think we've got 10 pairs, uh, both ways around is 20 pairs. The diagram shows a semicircle of radius 1 inside an isosceles triangle. The diameter of the semicircle lies along the base of the triangle and the angle of the triangle opposite the base is equal to 2 theta. Each of the two equal sides of the triangle is tangent to the semicircle. What is the area of the triangle? The area of the triangle is half base times height. Now we know that half the base is 1. So if we can work out this length, let's call it x. And we can do it in terms of theta. So this is going to be 180 minus, I'm not sure you can actually do that. 180 minus 2 theta over 2. So it's going to be 90 minus theta. Now, apologies. 180 minus theta over 2. Hmm. So because they're tangents, I wonder if we can do something with that. So because they're tangents, we can say that that is... Oh, hang on. The base isn't 1. The radius of the circle is 1. So that's 1. We don't know what the base is. So we're also going to have to work out the base, which is we'll call y. So if that's theta, that's that's going to be nine, 90 minus theta. That's also going to be theta as well. And the same is true for this other side, although I'm not sure we need that. Because we've got a kite here. So that's theta. Uh, so y is going to be... Sine is so y, you know, it's y is going to be cos, so cos theta is 1 over y, so we can say that cos theta is 1 over y because cos is, up, is adjacent over hypotenuse, which means that y, which is our base or half our base, is going to be 1 over cos theta. 
And I imagine you can do a similar thing with x, because that's theta, that's x, that's 1, and this is opposite. So this is actually going to be sine, so we can say sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse. Because this is your this is your this is your right angle, and there's your angle. So sine theta is one over x. So x is one over sine theta. And so to work out the area of the whole triangle, the base is two y. Half the base is y. So it's just x times y. So the area of the triangle is half base times height. Well, half the base is y. The height is x. It's going to be x times y which is this multiplied by this. So 1 over cos theta times 1 over sine theta is 1 over cos theta times sine theta, which is that one. Uh, they worked out x first, but it's, you get the idea. Poof. The graph of y equals 1 over x is reflected in the line y equals 1. The resulting image is reflected in the line y equals negative x. What is the equation of the final graph? So if you reflect this in the line y equals 0, i.e. you reflect it in the y, the y-axis, you're replacing x with negative x. So if you reflect it in the line y equals 0, which, apologies, uh, which is the x-axis, if you reflect it in the x-axis, i.e. the line y equals 0, you get y equals negative 1 over x. But because you're reflecting in the line y equals 1, you're reflecting in this line here, whatever you have here is going to be too higher, whatever you have here is going to be too low, it's too higher. In fact all the reflections, all the reflected points, because you're, you're moving the mirror line one up, all the reflected points will be too higher. So normally, if you reflect it in the x-axis, anything on the x-axis would stay still. But if you reflect it in the line y equals 1, anything on the x-axis is a is too higher. And anything 3 away will now be 5 away. So yeah, so I think once you've reflected the first bit, so if you reflect this, you see, if you reflect in the line y equals 0, so that after one reflection you're going to have y equals negative 1 over x. But it's going to be, because it's in this line, it's going to be 2 higher. I think that works. Right. The resulting image is reflected in the line y equals negative x. So y equals negative x is going to be... If you reflect in the line y equals negative x, and then it would go down here, wouldn't it? So when you reflect in the line y equals negative x, your y value becomes negative. And your x value becomes negative. In fact, you're going to change the signs of y and x. You're going to replace y with negative x and x with negative y. So this is the same after, after the second reflection. This is the same as saying you're replacing y with negative x and you're replacing x with negative y. So it's going to be minus 1 over negative y. So this is going to be negative x, I'm going to move down a bit, I hope that if this doesn't work I, I'm actually a bit lost, is positive 1 over y plus 2. So we take this to the side, we've got negative x, negative 2, take 2 is 1 over y, and what are our answers looking like? 
or y equals. So we can say that the reciprocal, if you do the reciprocal of both sides, they equal each other. So the reciprocal of this is y, and the reciprocal of this is 1 over negative x, take 2. Is that one of our options? 1 over negative x, take 2. Hmm. What if you multiply top and bottom by negative 1? I think you get that last one. So if you multiply top and bottom by negative 1, you get negative 1 over x plus 2. Can you do that? You can do that, can't you? Is that that last one? It's that first. No, it's the first one, isn't it? It's that one there. Yeah, I've just... I hope you, you, you could follow me there. So the first one, because you're reflecting line y equals 1, it's going to be a translation of 2 after reflecting. And then you're reflecting line y equals x. You can replace y with negative x and, negative, and x with negative y. And that's what we just did there. getting hard now you can see why I don't I, I never get them all right I'm not sure about that one so we'll check that at the end the diagram shows two overlapping triangles an isosceles triangle with an angle of 120 and an equilateral triangle with an area of 36 two of the vertices of the equilateral triangle are midpoints of the equal sides of the isosceles triangle what is the total area of the shaded regions inside the isosceles triangle we've got any lengths no. We've got an equilateral triangle with an area of 36. All right, so we know the area of this triangle is 36. So if that's 120, these are both 30. And this is 30. That's 60, which means that's a right angle. It does not look like it. That's a right angle, that's 60. Uh, that's 60. That's 60. That's 60. That's 60. That's 60. And because these are both 60, you know that this line is parallel to this line. Do not know if that helps. Right, so what do you know? The total area of the shaded regions inside the isosceles triangle. Um, so, so just the area of this triangle is 36, and the area of the triangle is 36 is uh, a half times AB sine 60. And I'm going to call the length of one side of the the whole the whole equilateral triangle x. So half times a times b times sine sixty is thirty six. So we can work out where x is. So seventy two is x squared times sine sixty. Sine sixty is root three over two. Uh, it's 144 over root 3 is x squared. Hmm. I don't know how this helps me, but it gets me a length. I need a length. That's the only way I can see to get a length. Uh, so we can say that's 144 multiplied by, I'm going to rationalise this, root 3 over 3 is x squared. Uh, 
Am I going wrong here? This is just isn't nice. If I square root this, I get 12 over square root of root 3 over 3. What the hell's that? Hmm. Not sure how that helps us. I don't, it's just not nice to, trying to square root this. Do I need to square root it? I could leave it as x squared. Yeah, I'm going to skip it, come back to it. For particular real numbers a and b, the function f is defined by function of x is ax plus b, and it's such that the function of the function of the function of x is 27x take 52. I just can't, I keep, I've forgotten how to do hard function questions. Alright, I come back to that one as well. I come back to a few today. The diagram shows a circle with centre O, which lies on a horizontal plane. The diameter of A B has length four. Point P lies above O and P O is two root two. Point C lies on the semicircular arc. A, B, such as the ratio of A, C to C, B is 2 to 1. So C is 2 thirds of the way round A, the arc A, B. What is the shortest distance from A to P, C? So if we... The shortest distance from A to PC will be the straight line between A to PC that is at right angles to it. If you think of PAC as a, as a, as a triangle, if you think of that plane PAC as a triangle, the shortest distance from A to PC is going to be this length here, which means we need to find out this length, this length, maybe even this length, and PC. So, we know that OC, in fact, that's 60, because it's, two third, it's one third of the whole distance between A to B, so we've actually got that's 120. And that's 2 and that's 2. So we can work out A to C. So we can say that AC squared, using the cosine rule, is A squared plus B squared, oops, plus B squared minus 2 times A times B times cos of 120. Cos of 120 is a half, I think. Cos of 120. So AC squared is 4 plus 4 is 8 minus 2 times 2 times 2 times cos 120 minus 4. Is cos 122? Oh, no, it's not, is it? It's not a half. Cos 120 is negative a half negative a half, so plus 4. So 
AC squared is 12. So AC is root 12, which is 2 root 3. So AC is 2 root 3. Can we work out PC? Yes, we can. We've got so PC squared is Pythagoras is the same as 2 root 2 squared plus 2 squared is. Uh, PC squared is 2 root 2 squared is 8 plus 4. So PC squared is 12. So PC is also 2 root 3. And PC must be the same as PA because P is directly above O. So 2 root 3. So weirdly, the triangle we're looking at, PAC, is an equilateral triangle. So this point here is actually half the distance of... So the length we're trying to find out is half the distance from P to C. So if you're looking at this, we can actually work that out quite easily just using Pythagoras. So we're going to call it... Uh, call that point M for them. It's the midpoint of PC. So we can work out AM... So we can say that 2 root 3, which is PA squared, is AM squared plus half of this length squared. So half of this length is just root 3, root 3 squared. So 2 root 3 squared is 12, is AM squared plus 3. So 9 is AM squared. Uh, AM is 3, which is an option. Oh, I like that. That was nice. I always like questions like that where you've got square roots and, and pies and weird things all over the place and you get a final answer of 3. It's quite nice. 2 root 3 is larger than 3, so that does make sense. A semicircle is inscribed in a quarter circle as shown. This looks awful. What fraction of the quarter circle is shaded? We haven't got any lengths. So the area of the quarter circle is going to be a quarter pi r squared. So if I say that this length is 2, then the area of the quarter circle is going to be a pi times 2 squared over 4, which is just going to be pi. So the area of the of the quarter circle is just going to be pi, assuming this is 2, because I've got no lengths. And now what we need to do is, given this is 2, can we work out the area of the semicircle? To work that out, we're going to need, we've got a large diagram here. So we've got this length is 2. So to do this, we're going to need to know, does it say, does it say inscribed? Do we know this is a tangent? I assume we do. So we know, assuming this is 2, we know that that's 2. That's 2. That is our radius. That is our radius. If it's inscribed, I think it means, yeah, it must must touch a, an edge. So I think we can say that that's 2, that's r, that's a right angle. This must be a square, r, that's r. What if we did that? We can work that out in terms of R, can't we? Because doing that gets us 
that's a right angle and we know that that's r that's 2 we can work out in fact what is this in terms of r that's r r so that's going to be root 2 r using pythagoras r squared plus r squared is this squared so 2 r squared is this squared and if you square that you get 2 r squared yeah okay so if that's r and that's root 2 r and that's 2 we can work out r we can say that r squared plus root 2 r all squared is 2 r squared equals 2. So we can say that 3 r squared is 2, r squared is 2 thirds, so r is root 2, root 2 thirds or root 2 over root 3, which is the same as root 6 over 3. I've just rationalised it. I don't know why I always do that, but I do. So the area of the semicircle is... So the area of the semicircle is going to be half of pi r squared. So the semicircle area of the semicircle is going to be half times pi times this squared. Well this squared is two thirds because we're just working backwards. So it's going to be a half times pi times two thirds is a third because a half of two thirds is a third. So it's a third pi. So if the area of the quarter circle is pi and the area of the shaded bit is a third pi What fraction of the quarter circle is shaded? It should be a third, which is an option. It doesn't look like it's a third, does it? Looks more like a half. Have I done that right? So, well, I've had nearly 90 minutes. Coming up to, I've had about 80 minutes. What fraction of the quarter circle is shaded? I've got a number that's there. It just doesn't look like that's only a third, does it? Much closer to it. It looks more than a half, but maybe this is deceptive. Because this bit covers this bit. This little white bit covers that bit. That little white bit covers that bit. And then that white bit is bigger than that. I don't know. I don't know. What have I done wrong? Have I done something wrong? I'm going to leave it because I've got an answer that's there, but I'm not sure it's right. It just doesn't look right. All right, we got that one. I've got eight. I've got exactly ten minutes left. I don't think I'm going to be able to do that one. So I missed this one. I missed this one. Hmm. hmm. Mean value of the coins is 52 pence, which could be the total number of coins in the purse. So the number of coins she's got, the number of coins she's got is 11 plus X plus Y. Oh, I've missed 11 out of this, haven't I? So if that's x and that's y, the total, she's got 11 plus x plus y. And the value of the coins in pence 
is 1100 plus 20x plus 20y, 50y. And the mean value of the coins is 52 pence. So you know that this is 52 lots of that. So you've got 1100 plus 20x plus 50y is 52 times 11 is going to be 572 plus 52x plus 52y. So if we take things away, we've got... Uh, What's so it? 528. 528 equals 32x plus 2y. What time are we at? I'm going to stop in six minutes because that's my 90 minutes is up. So multiples of 32 are you've got So if you have 528 take away a multiple of 32, you need to be left with an even number. So we've got 32. Do I just, can I just work it out? So x could be so multiples of thirty two. Once you get once you've done ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty, thirty two isn't this is less than that. So we need five hundred and twenty eight, take thirty two x's to equal two y. So we need uh we need, we can divide everything by 2, we can say that 267, 257, 257 take 16 needs to be y, so it needs to be a whole number, 16x. So, how many 16s go into 257? Sixteens, two, six, thirty-two, so. So you could have, you could have, oh, I'm just going to have to list these, 241 and so x, when x is 1, y is 241, when x is 2, y is 225, when x is 3, y is Oh my god, what do I have to go to? Is there a way of working out a pattern here? So this is going to be 242, oh dear. Is 209. 
when x is 4, y is uh, 193. Next, this is not an elegant way of doing it, apologies. 177. Next is 6, it's 161. 7. I can do 10 more. So when it's 16, it's 1. And when it's 15, it's 17. And when it's 6, 14, it's 33. This is a bit quicker. When it's 13, it's uh, 49. When it's 12, it's uh, 50, 65. When it's 11, it's 81. Now, I don't think 95 is the highest I can get to, so... 10 is 10 when x is 10 y is uh, uh, is 97 so I think if we add these two together we get 17 32 uh, 47 50 62. 77, 92. Are they any of the options? Which could not be the total number of coins in the purse? I haven't got any of those, have I? All right, I'm going to call it a day. Hey, FJSKV096. Yeah, I've just finished. I've missed three questions out. I got stuck on the one you've just seen. I got stuck on this one, and I couldn't do this one. But I think I've got answers for the rest. Uh, this video will go up on YouTube in a sec. I'm just going to mark it for those people watching on YouTube, um, and we will do the best we can. So if I get the answers up, this is the UK Senior Math Challenge 2018, and we'll see how many we've got right. So hopefully the highest second score is 110, I think. No, it's not. It's 100 and 113 is the highest second score. So let's see if I can give this a go. So off we go. Uh, green. Question 1 is C. Question 2 is also C. Question 3 is D. Question 4 is E. Question 5 is B. Question 6 is also B. Question 7 is A. Question 8 is B. Question 9 is A. Question 10 is D. Question 11 is B. Question 12 is A. Question 13 is E. Question 14 is D. Which is at 45. Question 15 is D. Question 16 is D. Question 17, if you've done it, is B. I'm going to come back and see if we can do that. 18 is A. 19 is C. 20. I liked 20. 20 was nice. 20 was E. 21 is A. 22, uh, I didn't get, but it was C. 23, if you did it, was B. 24 is E. And 25 is C. So I got that wrong. What did I do wrong? Yeah, it didn't look like a third. Uh, what have I done? Have I just done something stupid? No? Right, what have I done wrong in the last one? Right, we'll, we'll go, 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 go back to the front and get a score. So our score is, we got, we missed three questions out, so we scored, and we got one wrong, so we got 21 
fours is 84. We've got 25 marks to start with. We lose one mark for getting one of them wrong. And so we get 84, 109, 108 out of 125. Don't think I've ever, like I say, I don't think I've ever got all of these right, so I will uh, I will hold my head up high and say I'm not too embarrassed with that. Uh, I got one wrong and then three I couldn't get an answer for, so I didn't guess. If I'd have carried on going, I've used my 90 minutes, so if I'd have carried on going, maybe I could have got another one. So I'm going to check this one first because this is the one I actually had to go out and got wrong. And if we can have a look at what they've done. So their diagram looks a lot like mine. They've said this was one. Don't know what they've done. They've said they've got some very similar to me. So they've said, they've said, and I don't know where I don't know where I've gone wrong. They've said that was one, which means the area of their circle was pi over four. Because they've said this was one, they got a different value of r. They got r is one third. We got two thirds, which sort of makes sense if if our lengths are Half, if their lengths are half as big, their R is half as big. And then they, when they work this out, they got a half times pi times two thirds will times one third. So they got R squared is a third, sorry. So they got R was was um, something else. So they got a third. So they got a sixth pi here. So they get... They get as their area, they get the area of the shaded bit is pi over 6, and the area of the overall semicircle is pi over 4. And 6 or something over a quarter of something is 2 thirds. So they got two thirds. Now, where have I gone wrong? I think I've gone wrong here somewhere. It must be here. I must need to get two thirds here. How do I get two thirds here? Area of the semicircle is pi times half of pi times r squared. Well, r squared is two thirds. And a half of two thirds is one third. So the area of the semicircles. Yeah, I've gone wrong there somewhere. I should be getting, I should be getting two thirds here, because then I get two thirds over one, which gets me two thirds in total. Right. So I got that one wrong. Um, let's have a look at the other one. I had to go out and got wrong. Was this one? So I was nowhere near here. So what have they done? So they've said, they've said, let it be A and B. Uh, total number of coins is 11 plus A plus B. So I had that. The total value of our coins is 52 lots of 11 plus A plus B. So I had that. Equals 1100 plus 20A plus 20B. I, uh, plus 50B. I had that. So then they get, they simplified this to thirty. 
32a plus 2b is 528. I had that. Or 16a plus b is 264. Did I have that? Did I just forget to half this? Two hundred sixty-five. Halved it wrong, haven't I? I've just, uh, I got two hundred. I got two hundred fifty-seven. I halved. Oh my god! I halved it wrong. Oh, okay, so yeah, I just halved it wrong, and then. So what they've done, they've combined it back with this. They've said that they've they've added eleven to both sides, so you get two hundred and seventy-five. They've taken fifteen of these away. And then they've added 11 to this side, so they've got one of the A's left plus one of the B's. So the total number of coins has to be 15 lots of A less than 275. And uh, this is this is quite nice actually. So the total number of coins are because 270 divides into 15 18 times. We want all our answers need to be five more than the multiple of 15. It's really tough. I don't think I ever got this. So five more than the multiple of 15. That's five more than the multiple of 15. That's five more than multiple of fifteen. That is, and that is, which means that's our answer. Oh, I would have never got that. Oh, that was difficult. That was difficult. All right, yeah, I would never have seen that. All right, and then the last one we didn't do is twenty-three. I, I just can't do these. So whenever one of these comes up, I just skip it. I should probably work on them. So those, because the function is in front of that, then this becomes a lots of a lots of ax plus b plus b plus b. You don't need that last bracket. Plus b plus b. So the replaced because this is the form of the, this takes and it does it three times they've done this and then if you expand this out you get a cubed x plus a squared b plus a b plus b which can be written as a cubed x plus B lots of A squared plus A plus 1. And this equals 27x minus 52. So you need A to be, you need the same number of A's. Oh yeah, this is quite, it's actually doable from this point, I think. See if I can finish this off. So you need a to be 3, because a cubed needs to be 27, so a is 3. And then you need minus 52 to equal this. So b needs to be negative. So you need minus 52 to equal b lots of 9 plus 3 plus 1. 9 plus 3 plus 1 is 13. So you need minus 52 to equal some number of 13s. So B needs to be negative 4.
And so if A is 3 and B is negative 4, you need apologies. Not that one. It's that one. Why is it that one? What have I missed? Oh, so G of F of X, you need the inverse. So the inverse is this one. Oof. Yeah, so what you're trying to, F is telling you to multiply by 3, then take 4. So G is telling you to uh, add 4 and then divide by 3. That's why you want that one. Yeah, I wouldn't have got that. I liked it. I actually understood a bit of how to do that, but there we go. Uh, so that is it. That is, hey, Wylia, maths indeed. We've just done a senior maths challenge, UK senior maths challenge from 2018. We got 108 out of 125. I failed to do three questions in the time and I got one wrong. So that's our score for the day. Um, I will continue to do more maths challenges in the future uh, when I give it another go. I'm moving on to the 2017 paper. So next one I'm going to do is the junior 2017 paper, um, then the intermediate, then the senior one. And I'm going to keep going back in time until I've done all the ones I've got access to. Um, so anyway, if you've been watching on YouTube, thanks very much. Please put down the score you got in the comments below and uh, subscribe to YouTube to find out uh, more papers that I do in the future.